how many years have you been doing the fast? This is, I did, uh, just completed my second year. How did you find out about it? Uh, word of mouth. A, f a friend and fellow poet told me about it. She'd been doing it, I'm not sure, for a while. And she talked about how, much, how fun it was. And I thought I'd try it. Amy Miller? Uh, no, it was, it's a woman named uh, Sharon Ingraham. I, oh, Canadian. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you know Sharon? Uh, you know, I met her originally through a Modpo, which is a um, MOOC through UPenn, and Al Phil Reese. Al Phil Reese, yeah, he's a master. That's right. Um, what attracted you to Popo in the first place? Um, I'm several things. I'm interested in curating poetic communities. And I, uh, poetry is, tends to be sort of a solitary act. So um, getting it out there and um, having people participate is important to me. And then I also like the challenge of having to set myself up to do something like that on a regular basis instead of just following my own poetic whims. Setting yourself up sounds like, oh my God, I got set up and you're setting yourself up. It sounds like a bad thing. Yeah, no, no, no. It was a good thing. I, I, cause I had really no idea what I was going to do, but once I, I, uh, uh, set up a, or designed an approach for myself, created an approach for myself. It was really a blast. It was really a blast. You have a method. I did. I knew if I didn't have a method, I would just sit here and beat myself over the head. Can you talk about your method? I can. Um, the first year, uh, I decided to do centos, books by centos, and I set myself um, a limit to use only the books in my home or my pile from the library, and to have them all be five lines and to write them in five minutes or less. So that's what I did, because I wanted to sort of uh, enjoy the. Um, the idea of the postcard, which is something that's de written off the cuff. And so I wanted to um, make that happen as best I could without, you know, editing and re-editing and thinking too much. How does the Postcard Fest augment your own poetry composition practice? How does it augment it? Um, well, it has certainly partly because of the parameters I set for myself. It has... I've certainly written poems I never would have written otherwise, ever. I never would have, I never would have done a series of centos. I probably just would have never, I would have, you know, gone somewhere else with, you know, my time that I spend writing. Um, so it's pushed me to do things I wouldn't um, normally do. Uh, it helps me to uh, strive for concision because I always set myself to do these, you know, brief pieces. Um, and it's also just plain fun. Take us through your process. Um, you you sit down, you have a list, you have a card. Do you make the card? Do you buy the card? Do you do it at Can you take us through all that? Sure. Uh, the first year I bought cards, which I found was actually very difficult because it's hard to find decent postcards anymore. And a lot of times they have a, sort of an underlay thing on the back. So you it's uh, like a uh, light picture or something. I don't know quite how to describe it. For scenic postcards. Um, um, and so what I did that year was I wrote them on the computer and cut them out and taped them onto the card itself. This year, I, um, I made my own postcards. I made collages on my printer, totally winging it here. And because I did them on the printer, I couldn't really see what they were going to look like until I, the paper came out. And then I just cut them into quarters and, you know, did it from there. And, and in, in that case, I tended to choose cards that might respond to what I was about, what I'd already decided to write on the card, what I decided to use for my prompt. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't do it ekphrastically at all. So. It's a lot to think of. It is. Yeah. It is. Do you have examples of the cards you made? Can you show them, put, put them on the screen or? Can you give me a minute? Sure. Yeah, they're right here, I think. 
we have a nice view of Central Oregon out the window. So it's very, very Oriental, very Asian. I can't actually hear you very well because I had to step away. It's probably a good thing. Okay. Um, I don't actually have the cards, but I have some of the um, full on pieces of paper that I did that I cut the cards from. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Far out. Yeah, I, I tore paper with cool textures and uh, took herbs from the garden and, you know, odd objects and just, you know. And so then when I cut them in quarters, you know, I never, it was a whole nother thing. And this year, my, what I set myself up to do was I chose titles from the covers of discarded popular science and aviation magazines. And I used those titles as a sort of a springboard. So it could be people in Oregon, Maine, Florida, and California, all with a little hunk of what was one thing at one time. Yes, that's true. So this paper, you, do you, you then glue it onto a card or? you? No, I just got some heavier paper from the office supply store and not quite as heavy as I would have liked, but you know, as heavy as I could get. And I think they, I hope they held up okay. So. That describes poetry as heavy as I can get, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I uh, guess it does. Do you send bonus cards above and beyond the 31 each postcard season? Uh, I did not the first year, but I did the second year. It's like potato chips, you can't stop, or what's it like? Uh, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like people who said, boy, I can't participate, but I I'd love to be involved. I just don't have the time right now. So I said, well, I'll just send you one of mine, that kind of a thing. There you have it. Tell yeah. us tell us three things you love about Popo. Um, I love getting things in the mail that aren't bills or trash. Um, I love the, just the unexpected pleasure of um, language that I get from s someone that I don't know and I never knowing what it's going to be. And I love the way it pushes me to uh, set myself up to do something I wouldn't do otherwise. Of the cards that you've gotten um, that just, you look at them and, and you're stunned by them, do you remember the person or the uh, situation or do you remember anything like that? I mean, like I could tell you, you know, Abea Thomas, uh, Colette Dutton, um, and Terry Holtzman and other people, they send me cards and I just go, wow, look at that. Do you remember? Um, you know, I, I don't offhand, but I do, I, I save, I've saved them for the two years running. And there's like four or five that are stashed in the top of the pile that I come back to. Um, that one, one name you mentioned is familiar, Terry Holtzman. So I, I she must've been on my list, she or he. And um, I, I don't, you know, offhand, I don't know. And, you know, the variety is so stunning, you know, that it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you uh, frequent the Facebook page? Do you go there and? I don't do Facebook. Good for you. Yeah. A model for the rest of us. I don't know, but it works. No, I think so. Um, three things about Popo that you would fix that we change. Fix. Um, I can't really think of anything that I would fix at all, but it would be kind of cool if I, if there were more people from in, around the world. And I don't know, you know, that's just a word of mouth thing. I know I've had a few international cards on my list every year, but can you bear with me just a moment? I have to let my dog out. She's, me <laughs> She's driving me nuts. <laughs> says I'm having nothing of you staring at the screen. Okay. Um, are there any poetry communities to whom you're connected who you think might like to hear about the fest? Um, I can't think of any offhand. I have just a few isolated communities, and they uh, they've all been told by me. So you know, You've, you're I, on it already. Yeah, yeah, and I spread it. Or I participate in Modpo every year, and so I spread it around there too. And there's other people that spread it around too that are so. What advice would you have for someone on the fence about Popo? Um, I would just say, you know, take a chance and go for it. And I also would recommend, I know I've had uh, someone who did it who really struggled. And I think setting parameters, I think 
for me at least, setting a parameter really helped. I know if I was just going to sit down and start to write a postcard to somebody and it was going to be poetic, it would probably end up be something that I would really want to just like tear up and put in the recycling to just kind of wing it off the cuff um, without some the world is just too big and to to get it down would I think be difficult for me but setting up a parent, some sort of constraint I think for me at least is really helpful some something to bounce out from I guess is a better word really is there anything else about uh, the fast year experience uh, or anything related that you think is important to talk about uh, I, I I can't, I'm not coming up with anything, but I, I think the best thing is that it, I think it it's allows us to push ourselves. I think that's the, really the cool part. I mean, I, another thing I did as a result was I took what I did that year and I made a handmade book out of it. And I've, I've shared the book with, you know, various people and, and I might not have done that if I didn't have this nice little concise group of connected pieces to put together also. Is there much of a poetry community in Bend, Oregon? Um, there is. It's actually fairly lively. Um, there's a few uh, um, groups. There's a, the a local paper that does a, a poetry uh, contest every year. And um, it, it's fairly, I think, fairly active for the size of the community. Yeah. How far are you from Playa? Um, funny you should ask. I'm actually about a hundred miles from Playa Plus, but I used to live about five miles or maybe seven miles from it. I used to live in a little tiny town of Paisley, which is just south of Playa. Have you been to Playa? Well, um, I have. I've been there for some of their open houses, and I've also, before it was Playa, it was actually a, a an inn, and I, you know, had friends who would stay there, and so I went there before then. Also, it's a beautiful facility. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you have a postcard poem you have written that you'd like to share with us? Sure. I'll take it out of this handy little book I made. This is from the series that was uh, done in response to titles on the covers of Popular Science Magazine. So obviously it's called, the collection is called Titled. This is titled 17, Life and Death, The Only Story. And maybe it is permeable, the veil between living, dying, and maybe they, maybe they are concurrent, not consecutive, coexisting, like pith and cambium, heartwood and sap. <laughs> it's hard to get piss in a poem in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you succeeded. The As you read, and as I hear the title of your piece, and I hear about your method, I'm immediately brought into the notion of one of my favorite things about Popo and about poetry is seriality. Writing a serial, uh, you know, poem, or having themes that you either come back to or you find keep appearing in your work. Have you thought much about seriality and is that, is it conscious? Uh, I mean, just the way you create your method, that is almost like seriality in mind with that because it's gonna have certain characteristics because of the because uh, of the constraint. Yeah. Um, it certainly is true for those two, for those instances, for those things I've set up to do for Popo. But I, it's also, I hadn't necessarily thought of it with that word in mind, but it's also true of a lot of work that I write because I, I key into some pretty, I come back a lot to think, to landscape. I mean, it's, truth of the matter is it's almost always landscape. People say, there's no people in your poems, Julie. And I say, well, yeah, I know. So, so yeah. That would be my my nod to seriality, I suppose. Nate Mackey um, has, uh, he, I interviewed him and he discussed seriality and he and Robin Blazer are two of the ones that really stand out in my mind who practice seriality and who have articulated it and have inspired me. And I think that seriality 
uh, serial poetry is the most open art form that there is. So that's my thing. Wonderful. You You've given me something to think about with that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you Google Nate Mackey on seriality, uh, or if you read the introduction to Robin Blazer's The Holy Forest, that's those are two good places to start. Um, really uh, grateful for your time today and for uh, your inspired participation in Popo. And uh, I hope our paths cross again. In a, yes. In maybe even it in will next year. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well. Thanks. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Bye.